Sometimes a new technology comes along and it has the capability to transform how we view our world. I like to look at technology opportunities where the technology seems like it's on the cusp of viability. And if it succeeds there, it can be really transformative for the world. The story of human evolution is one that is intimately tied to meat. Once we started cooking meat, then we could get lots of energy. And that energy enabled us to have big brains and become physically, anatomically human. Hunters and gatherers all over the world are very sad if, for a few days at a time, the hunters come back empty-handed. The camp becomes quiet, the dancing stops, and then somebody catches some meat, they bring the prey into the camp, or nowadays into somebody's back garden with a barbecue, everybody gets excited to come and share the meat. It is ritually cut and passed out to people. We are a species designed to love meat. Feeding the world is a complex problem. I think people don't yet realize what an impact meat consumption has on the planet. We have a vision in our minds of, you know, there's this pristine farm, it's got a couple cows, a couple chickens, but that's not actually how meat gets produced today. 70% of the antibiotics used in the United States now are not used on people, they're used on animals in agriculture because we keep them in such inhumane, overcrowded conditions. When you see how these cows are treated, and it's certainly something I'm not uh, comfortable with. If you eat a lot of meat, you're 20% more likely to have a chronic disease like cancer or, or heart disease just because of the fat and what's in the fat. 18% of our greenhouse gas emissions come from meat production. We're also using something like 1,500 gallons of water to produce just one pound of meat. Meat takes up about 70% of our arable lands. There's no question that if we were able to shift more of our land into intensive fruit and vegetable production, we'd be able to feed a lot more people a lot healthier diet. With the global population growing from 7 billion to 9 billion people, by 2050, the demand for meat will double. We can't just continue doing what we've been doing. Unless we make some changes in how we produce meat on this planet, we're in for a terrible reckoning. What climate change is going to do is going to change resource distribution. And in a modern world where we have paleolithic mines and contemporary weapons, that's really dangerous. There are basically three things that can happen going forward. One is we will all become vegetarian. I don't think that's really likely. You know, the second is we ignore the issues, and that leads to continued environmental harm. And the third option is we do something new. Meat is muscle, muscle from an animal. By our technology, we actually are producing meat. It's just not in a cow. I'm a physician, and I do mostly cardiovascular research, making tissues, especially blood vessels, for bypass grafting. The stem cell techniques are very useful for growing beef. We take a few cells from a cow, muscle-specific stem cells that can only become muscle. There's very little that we have to do to make these cells do the right thing. They divide by themselves, and if we provide those anchor points, the future tendons, they will self-organize into muscle. So a few cells that we take from this cow can turn into uh, 10 tons of meat. Some people think this is science fiction. It's not real, it's somewhere out there. I actually think that's a good thing. If what you're doing is not seen by some people as science fiction, it's probably not transformative enough. It's really just a proof of concept right now. We're trying to create the first cultured beef hamburger. From there, I'm optimistic we can really scale uh, by leaps and bounds. 20 years from now, if you enter the supermarket, you would have the choice between two products that are identical. One is made in an animal. It now has this label on it that 
animals have suffered or have been killed for this product. And it has an ecotex because it's bad for the environment. And it's exactly the same as an alternative product that is being made in a lab. It tastes the same, it has the same quality, it has the same price or is even cheaper. So what are you going to choose? From an ethical point of view, it has only benefits. The more we're aware of how this whole system fits together, I think the more interest there is on the part of consumers in a completely different system altogether. Meat consumption was part of the human species. It's been fantastically beneficial for us. And now, by some horrendous irony, it's become part of a system that threatens our species. We have to do something about it.